because that crucial, crucial match, that two-point swing or the six-pointers we've been talking about mm. all season, was against against Authority yesterday, and they lost that. So, Pixar Band's underway. You can see Kennen and Elise being taken away by the Wolves, and Zed and Shen removed by the Giants. Twisted Fate still in there. Cassidy still in there. These are big champions for the two mid laners, and we could see whether they're going to get them again. And Cassidy for Exterminari yesterday was fantastic. He gave Gambit a really, really tough time dealing with him, and once they were able to deal with him, Gambit bounced back from that matchup. So if X is allowed to get that play pick again, it'll work into his favor, but it is not the case because it has been banned out by the Copenhagen Wolves. So Twisted Fate available. Do they go for it? Do they go straight for Jarvan? Of course they do. So this is something that we've seen earlier in the day. This is exactly what happened from the Copenhagen Wolves. Keep in mind, Twisted Fate is available here. Exter is a Twisted Fate player, so he may actually decide to lock that particular champion in. We have seen the Giants first picking Zyra fairly often in the past. So we'll see how that you know, uh, particular strategy plans out for them. Some interesting stats on Jarvan the Fourth coming into this week. 25 games played, 17 victories and 8 losses. That is a fantastic, fantastic win-loss ratio. That doesn't include yesterday and today's games though. So that's 9 weeks prior. The thing with Jarvan that always gets me is a lot of people were saying North America behind, but they were playing it way before yep. Europe. Yep, they, they were running Jarvan when we were still running uh, uh, mostly Volibear and Nasus. Then it sort of traded and went back and mm. forth. So the Twisted Fate has been locked in there for Exterminare. Not a big surprise. They want to deny that from Bjergsen. They don't want him to jump onto that. Kha'Zix is there for him. And we've seen that sort of, you know, Assassin versus TF matchup in the mid lane before. So we'll see whether the Thresh does work out this time, but better. I'm trying to think whether, how many times I've seen him running that. Of course, it does mean that Varus is going to get selected. The question is, who will they go alongside it? Will it be the top lane or will it be the support? This should be the first time that we're actually seeing Babetta on mm. Thresh. In terms of his statistics, 11 games on Zyra, 10 games on Sona, 2 games on Lulu. So the majority, actually I think that's all of them, if my math is not too terrible, has been on other champions. So it's good to see him expanding his champion pool. It may also help Jim Bones because Zyra... Zyra is great for control, but she's not necessarily that great for setting up kills and get a lot of free poke early on. So we'll see if Thresh is going to be a little bit more impactful in that matchup. You mentioned the virus being hovered over and locked in. That's been one of the Tess's go-to AD champions and probably one of my favorite virus players in the whole of Europe. Well, that pick there excites me. It excites me a lot. To see Bjergsen on Kha'Zix. Of course, it could be the top lane. I could be Godbro, but I'm expecting to be Bjergsen. Now, it, it will be Bjergsen. He's the assassin player. He's he's the game making the game making player for the team, and with the champion that's you can get the reset and hop, skip, and jump in is, is always going to play to your favor. Interestingly, with Kazix in Europe, played 24 times, 12 wins, 12 losses. So completely 50-50 down the split. Depends on the team that's handling him. When Gambit handles him, you expect a win. When Bjergsen handles him, you expect a win as well. So, great, great pickup. It's going to allow him to counter uh, Exta in the mid lane in terms of the head up, the head to head matchup. But obviously, the map presence is, is not going to be there for him. And we've seen uh, it was actually Bjergsen playing Zed against Alex's Twisted Fate, where Alex is like, look, I'm playing the feed strat. I'll go 0 and 6, <laughs> but my team will still win because I have that map map presence and that map strength. So, Xin Zhao and Caitlyn being locked in for. Giants. We did see Shin Sao being used yesterday as the tanky member of the uh, teams, but did work out well. Ended up building the Triforce on him. We'll see how that works out for them. It will be, of course, Samux, I would expect, in the top lane. Could be the jungler, though. I was going to say, at the moment, I, I would probably think that's going to be more likely to be the mm. jungler role. We did see him in the top lane yesterday. It was against Authority and Freddy that was running him in a slightly different comp. They, they had a little bit more of an aggressive all-in type of positioning. So I don't expect that to be top laner. We still haven't seen the top laner yet from the Copenhagen Wolves. And we know that Godbro tends to build somebody tanky. He likes to have that beefy resistance, that a HP pool to draw from. And he has been playing a lot of Shen and a lot of Singed of late. So he's going to be playing something different. Oh, they threw yes. Us for a loop, and it actually means he's going to be playing Kazix. Oh, and it does also mean that Syndra is going to be in the middle. That is the champion that Bjergsen got his pentakill with. So we've got to keep our eyes on that one. I've got a feeling, was it against Giants when he got that pentakill? Uh, it was against All Authority, in fact. Oh. Their very first pentakill was their first victory as well, Super Week, all the way back in week four. Yes. It was second to last game on Friday, if I remember correct. Um, and yeah, it was in the mid lane. Great, great power. I, I still remember seeing Link, I think the previous week from CLG and NA. He was the first one that did very well with her. And of course, Bjergsen coming back into, into the gameplay and it just 
The amount of damage that comes down from Syndra is immense. And that's a very squishy lineup. I mean, he can blow up uh, um, Zenzao before items Thresh, Twisted Fate, Caitlyn, fairly quickly with a full combo, and he has the ability to do so. And a good Syndra is just a scary thing, yeah. because he, you just keep him on full lockdown. Those balls will be flying all left, right, and center, and they just completely lock you down. As it is, we do see Jax being locked in. Jax, a champion we saw in North American LCS this Super Week. So now Jax is an interesting pickup here. Now, you tend to build Jax against somebody who's going to be, you know, either an auto attacker that you can dodge a lot of the abilities, you can you know, leap around with your leap strike, and you tend to trade very evenly. But Kha'Zix is a little bit more of a caster. He's less reliant on continually right-clicking you for damage, and more so on the Void Spikes and Taste their Fear. So that Counter-Strike is going to be all but nullified. But if they're going to go for a 1v2 lane, it's going to be interesting. If it's a 1v2, but Jax is actually a pretty good counter to Kha'Zix. From my... From what I recall of my days. Well, we'll see how the matchup plays out. I, I, I imagine with the amount of poke and the sustain that Godbro is going to have from his Void Missiles, I do feel like he's going to have the advantage in that lane matchup. Mm -hmm. He has built-in sustain. He can leap to safety without relying on a target, like a, you know, a, a minion or, or friendly champion. So it, it, it's probably going to be a skill matchup in, the, in, in that particular lane. But interesting composition. And the first time we're seeing some new champions for Giants, which bodes well if they want to surprise the <laughs> Copenhagen Wolves. Is it, is it surprising themselves? That's the danger of this situation because the Copenhagen Wolves, they know exactly what they've got and they will be feeling very comfortable on it. The question is, can the Giants compete the other ones? We get a little bit of a strobe lighting going on at the back there for the, uh, the Wolves. <laughs> Obviously, just, just you know, Sven Skiren, just keep awake, lad. Keep awake. This is, this is a pretty important game for you. A big yawn coming out there. So... They will be getting underway. Air conditioning unit being used at the back there, I might note, because it is quite warm here in Cologne. Not exactly LA weather. I'm not going to go all out and say that, but yeah, it's not too bad, not too bad. You may have seen Gambit already in their short sleeve shirts. You know, It caught me by surprise yesterday as well. I didn't know they owned T-shirts. They've been wearing those Gambit hoodies the They've, they've snuck them out, yeah. I think they're pretty new, to be fair. They did have Steel Series badges on them, so they're the new, the new shirts for them. But uh, here we are. We're about to get underway, ladies and gentlemen. They're just going to be the blue team, Copenhagen Wolves. They are already 1-0 up in Super Week. Meanwhile, the Giants, they are 0-2 in Super Week and fighting to stay in sixth place while Copenhagen Wolves chase down evil geniuses for that fourth spot. Can they get it after their 0-9 start to the season? It would be an incredible feat. Let's see if they can do it. So talking about that, they went 0-9 at the start of the season and they went then 10-4 and after that massive losing streak. So their win-loss ratio improved significantly. I definitely think the eyes need to be on Godbro in this particular matchup because we're seeing him on the Assassin that's a little different. Extra in this mid lane, he's got the gold card procked and ready and almost caught Sven Skeren out, but he does manage to get away with his life. And straight away, so Bjergsen going a little bit aggressive on towards Morden. Morden on that Shin Zhao. And the ward placement does finally come through. Svenskeren is going to be spotted on those raids. Pings go down on towards Godbro. They know that he's in the river as well. So very much a steady start, as I say that. Babetta throws out the hook. Babetta was hiding just out of vision there from Bjergsen, and he was hoping to see if they, that exploratory death sentence would actually land. Unfortunately, he didn't manage to make it work. But nevertheless, some vision, and therefore the Giants, which is very key, it's going to give them the timer when Sven Skeren's moving around the map, and obviously just help prevent some of those early level ganks. So here we go. Pings everywhere, but no action. It's going to be a slow and steady start for these games. Fourth game of the day here in Super Week as well. Plenty more games to go. Another 11, if my memory serves. This Correct. has been the... the eight, tomorrow and three, eight tomorrow, three left today. And you know what? There's a lot to play for with these two teams because both of their playoff dreams are actually both a possibility here. Uh, like we said, for Copenhagen Wolves, it's a little bit more likely because they do have less losses and more wins. But if the Wolves can continue winning and continue putting on performances like they did earlier today, they have a real possibility of catching the evil geniuses. Well, this could be a big job for them. We do see the uh, invisible red buff, or no, he's already got the red buff. It's just me, Sven Skeren, eventually taking it down. It yes, it is, it is an, an invisible. It's an invisible red buff. It was an invisible I'm like, red buff. I'm pretty sure there's something other than that tiny little lizard doing that damage that's, to him right there. That's, that's a first, actually. I don't think I've ever seen an invisible red buff before. But nevertheless, he's going to pick that one up. So nothing too off, you know, exciting at this exact moment in time. Samus goes aggressive on Godbro. Yeah, straight away gets that counter strike on him. So Godbro, we'll see whether that, how that works out between, like you mentioned, a skill matchup very much between the two. He could jump in. Godbro could use the void spikes. He could get the help. 
health steal back. The life steal, I should say, health steal. It's a new one. And it was a good play by Samus because he hit level two earlier than Godbro and immediately dove on him. So he used that level advantage, and it's something that you need to make use of if you want to take control of a lane. We do see on the bottom lane that both the Tess and Varus are being pushed, but in the top lane, it's an early party. Svenska and snuck over the wall, but he is about to step on a ward. No, it's his own ward. He's, he's on top of his own ward, so he's not going to be spotted out. Instead, he's going in towards the red. It looks like he's going to go towards the middle instead, but they know that Morden's on the top. So Morden would potentially have been spotted out. Godbro's playing relatively defensive. He has his leap as well as the flash available. So and as long as he doesn't get stunned up instantly by that Counter-Strike, he should be able to get away to safety. The question is, how long will Morden hang around? The answer is not much longer. And there is the flash being used in the middle exterminate, being taken pretty low. And Svensko didn't quite land it this time, but Bjergsen starting to push that farm in the mid lane. So well played by him to at least zone out extra and force the flash. So if Bjergsen manages to get that stun down, but they catch the test. The hook bounds to go through, but they don't follow him on the twit. And Jim Bones just weren't quite on the same page length there as Babetta trying to make the plays, but didn't quite turn out for him. No, it wasn't, it wasn't in range. And with Caitlyn, that's quite difficult because she's got such a huge range. But in the mid lane with that flash being down, if Bjergsen manages to scatter the weak, the E and get a stun down into Twisted Fate, there is the potential for an insta-kill because he does have that ignite available. And while that is happening, there is actually a pretty good CS advantage building for Jim Bones in that bottom lane. We've got to keep our eyes on that one because the test is definitely struggling out again. Two fat lasses going at it in the top lane. You can see it's Godbro and Samux. They're going to be rubbing up against each other for the whole game. And it does look like the trades are relatively even so far. Both players, you know, drinking through their potions. At the moment, Godbro has one additional health potion to that of Samux. So in terms of potential HP, he has the advantage. I like seeing the aggression from both of these teams. They're trying to outpoke one another. And the test is falling behind because of that range. Those auto attacks from Caitlyn are just so difficult to deal with in lane. And she's one of the best lane bullies around. And the cheeky slaps from a Bebeta. Keep helping oh. the hook lands this time. Can they finish it off? Can they get first blood? One more shot. Pilter, but will it? No. Barrier comes out. And they do get the first blood. And it's Bebeta that picks it up. So well played there by Giants, playing so aggressive there. The Tess caught a second hook in, the, you know, a few minutes. We do see, though, that Morden, he's got positioning on Bjergsen, and he's coming round from the back. He's coming round from the side. Will Bjergsen be able to dodge it out there? You can see he's going to go towards the river. Instead, he doesn't go for it and backs in towards the race. So he's going to just at least steal away some of that. What that's going to do is put Sven Skeren a little bit behind in terms of experience in gold. However, Sven has swung around to this bottom lane. We'll pick up some of the experience and obviously share the gold there with Deficio's Lulu. And that's going to play him up. But X has been slow. Now he's baiting him into it and said Bjergsen's going to go for the kill. He puts the ignite down. He will make it. Now can he turn on towards Morton? He flashes through. Straight flash back through. Morton should pick up the kill. Revenge kill on Bjergsen. Tries to bait him round. Doesn't the manage slow. to get the slow. The slow goes down. Is it going to happen no he gets the audacious charge and finishes him off 1-1 one, one, trade the time that the cooldown on scatter the week the stun is around 18 seconds right now and it was the reason he couldn't get to safety but he did so so well picked up his own little ball that he threw down got the slow onto Morden and prevented that additional auto attack but nevertheless they trade one for one but Bjergsen already showing that he can out duel and out kill Exter's twisted fate so, how do they return back to lane? Top lane is actually a big advantage building for Godbro right now over Samix. You can see 47 to 34. Big CS difference. He's going to get the Counter-Strike down on towards Godbro, though. He's going to turn aggressive on this one. He has got Leap Strike. Follows it through the Ignite there. One more hit. He needs the Leap Strike cooldown. Doesn't bother flashing for it. Could have gone for it, but forces the flash from Godbro. And Godbro drank his Fortitude pot there. He was anticipating another Leap Strike, so he burned through all of that. That CS advantage is playing into his favor because of the fact that he has Splash Damage A we it allows him to our last hit a little bit more effectively. What we do see though, Sven Skeren's job, and he snuck into this river bush, but he stood on top of a giant's ward. So they're well aware of his positioning, and Morden's moved to the side. This time around, no hook lands, but here comes Destiny. Extermin goes in, gets the stun guard down on the test. The hook comes through the pilt of a peacemaker, but he didn't manage to land it. Instead, the lantern was launched in there, ready and waiting to see if he needed to get out of the hell out of there. But they didn't wait for Morden. No, once again, just the timing a little bit off what they need to in that particular situation, but a Fairly good play. Now we see two members of Giants in the mid lane. Sven Skeren is coming up from behind though, and he has the fight. Extermin actually backs away from this one. It's Morden that takes the damage from Bjergsen, and everybody avoids the damage. So well played there to at least avoid it, but you know, Giants, they're trying to make plays happen, and I like to see the aggressive play out of them. They have a one kill advantage, and they currently got an 800 gold advantage thanks to that big CS difference in the bottom lane. 
Now we do see that uh, Morden has started off the blue buff. He's going to wait for Exa to swing around. Svenskeren has got full vision of it. And you can see with Bjergsen leaving the lane, Morden realizes this and backs away. Yeah, he's like, ah, something seems a little off here right now. And Bjergsen pulls it over, uses the <laughs> abilities of Syndra to slide it over. Meanwhile, Svenskeren just plays defensive duty. There's the smite, and that is Bjergsen stealing it away. Very, very well played. That force of all the W allows you to pick up enemy minions and just pull them into your side of the map. God, bro, he's left the top lane, and they want to put more pressure onto Exeter. There's three members of the Wolves. They smell blood in the water, and it's the car dealer that they want. I don't think they're going to go for it. The jungler does back away, so Svenskeren calls it off, and that means that Godbro does bear head back towards that top because he pushed the lane so heavily that he thought, well, I might as well go looking for something. There's nothing happening in the top lane. Well, we see he has the aggression in the top lane. Straight away trades back in towards him, and there's quick passives between the two champions, both sort of playing aggressively there. But Godbro, he's going to continue that farm. He's still got that 10 CS advantage. So even though he's losing that trade in terms of damage, he does have the gold advantage. But who does not have the gold advantage is the bottom lane. The fact that Babetta's Thresh has been so you know, impactful in the lane and applied so much pressure to the Tess and Deficio, there is almost a 30 CS deficit, which is a massive amount of gold difference at this stage in the game. Yeah, and you can see just Babetta clearing out, putting that pink ward down, keep taking the vision away from the Copenhagen Wolves, and it is such a good job in that bottom lane. He's causing problems. The stun cards, the flash comes out, but Bjergsen just walks away from this one. The audacious charge, I can turn this one back around. Morton taken very, very low. He should get dropped. Sven wow. picks up the kill and now Bjergsen taking low he's trying to stay at range can Sven Skeren take down Gex Thurman yes he can the catalyst comes on there he's gonna try and get away but the slide oh. knocks him out and it's the double kill for Sven Skeren now in the bottom lane the fight's not over we see Babetta going aggressive on Deficio but completely outplayed Sven Skeren and Bjergsen they landed every ability that they needed to and they managed to pick up those two kills without reply and there, Godbro going back and forth with Samix in that top lane. It is so, so close across these lanes. He's going to go in towards it. He does try and catch away from this one, but he just about backs away. Bjergsen, the Hawk lands on towards the test. He dives in, puts the box down, but he's caught out. There's going to be Chain of Corruption. Can he keep him just outside of the tower range? Jim Bones getting the poke down. But look at this, almost double the CS now. The massive difference, and that tower is now getting lower and lower and lower. Crucially, though, Wild Growth is still available for Deficio. So if they want to pick another fight and they get some poke down, they can swing things around. Up in the top lane, just before we came down to the bottom lane, that trade went back and forth, and Samix did not have Ignite available. If he had Ignite, he could potentially have actually picked up that kill, and this is the pressure we're talking about. And here comes Sven Skeren once again, without repeating myself, this is like free call over again, and Babetta is going to get caught out. This time it's the test. They had to give the kill to him because he's fallen so far behind. Very, very crucial in that lane with that big, big CS difference. Ext has been slowed in here. Is he caught out? He's going to get the stun down and the slow. Bjergsen's going to go aggressive. Fires oh. all the Balls, but he just about survives on 50 hit points. It does look like Bjergsen dropped the ball for that one, but he does apply some damage into this mid lane tower and he's going to at least zone Morden away. Oh, well, you see Bjergsen, he keeps firing his balls back towards Morden. Did use his ulti in the last fight though, so he won't go full on aggressive against Morden. It's just going to keep him at bay. It is gaining them at CS advantage. He's got a 20 CS difference now in the mid lane. Now, Godbro, you can see a number of pings on from those are blue pings saying there's a ward here. He's moving down. It does look like they're trying to do some shenanigans. It's the second time we've seen Godbro moving to this mid lane to try and set a kill up. He has his ultimate available, but Bjergsen does not. If no stun comes down from Bjergsen, I don't think they have enough to instigate anybody. It's not often you'd see a Spaniard being outplayed by a Dane with footballs, but uh, this case definitely seems to be Bjergsen certainly working it in that mid lane. Top lane has been left abandoned a little bit now, right now. There's another ball coming in, and Extermin, he might be sent packing already. That's three abilities, and Exter lost half of his HP. He is falling so far behind in terms of CS, and he's going to be relying on Destiny Gangs to pick kills up. Look at the positioning in the bottom half of the map there. Sven Skeren is coming up behind the members of Giants. Morden doesn't know. Sven would have seen Morden there, and he's going to be so cheeky and pull over the side. Cataclysm is available. Chain of Corruption goes through, and it seems to be but better. They're going to jump towards the Lash comes out. They do try and slow him down. Here comes Extermin, though, and the Cataclysm goes in there. The Wild Growth on towards Sven Skeren. He's going to pay for it with his life. He did get the kill on towards but better. Ace in the hole comes out, and he gets blocked off brilliantly by Deficio. But the Wild Card goes through and takes down the test. And now Bjergsen going to come in from the river lane. Can he get in towards it? It's Extermin he wants to go for. It's Jimbo's. He's going to target, though. Throws the ball out. The ultimate comes out, but he's not 
going to be the barrier there. He will pick up more than though, so it's going to be an exit kill effectively for Bjergsen. Manages to at least get one, so they end up trading two for two in that particular engagement, if my math is correct, or two for one. But uh, a little bit overzealous from the Copenhagen Wolves. They went aggressive in that bottom lane. They put a lot of abilities down, but they completely forgot that Exus Twisted Fate was around. He joined the party, and instantly that fight was lost. And how is this one working out right now? Samix has got a strike running, flashes for it, doesn't quite land it. The ultimate coming out from Godbro helps him just go invisible and run that little bit extra faster. Manages to get just away to safety, still has his flash available. Flash and Ignite was burned from Samix, and with the cooldown now of Ignite back from Godbro, anticipate a Sven Skeren gank. Having his full complement of abilities and summoner spells means that he's going to have the advantage in these next trades. Godbro's sticking around, and he may get dived again. He's got to be a little careful. Well, we do see that Sven Skeren is looking for it. Now, honestly, Sven Skeren, he's been creating so many plays. Look at Bjergsen's ready and waiting to just pull that blue buff over. There it is. Thank you very much. Yoink. And Copenhagen Wolves will pick themselves up into the blue. So it's something that we've actually seen from a, an, a couple of different champions, oh. the likes of Blitzcrank or things like that. Uh, if Sven Skeren's taken it, he may have smited it just to be sure it's his. You do tend to do that when you're stealing a blue buff, if you've got a jungler around, and then you can donate your blue buff to your ally teammate. Now, whether or not it's intentional is another question, but they've stunned Godbro. And Godbro this time has hasn't got flash to get away from this one. He will get taken down. He did have it, actually, but it didn't matter because he was dead. Yeah, I think they knew he was going to be, you know, caught out, so he decided to save the abilities instead of doing anything else. So he just went down. A good play by Giants. They still maintain that gold lead. Uh, pretty exciting game so far. Very much back and forth action with Sven Skeren coming up towards the top. They're scared of that Jarvan. He don't mess around this one. He's got three kills already. And he's likely to just jump on your head at any moment in time. The Lash comes out there once again from Babetta. This time it doesn't land. That Ping Ward has been placed in there by Deficio this time, keeping him away from that bush. So 40 CS is the difference because of those death sentences, those hooks from Thresh being so impactful and scary. It means the Tess has not been able to CS and pull himself ahead. But we see a similar situation in the mid lane. Because of the amount of pressure that Exter is feeling from Syndra, he's literally farming with his wild cards. That's it. He cannot get in range to land the picker cards or to just auto attack down. He's just playing it as safe as possible. Bjergsen is going to pick up his own blue buff after that steal earlier, but they've denied the second and third blue buff spawns from their opponents, which is a great play from them. So let's look at how this has developed. You can see overall the mid lane. Bjergsen has that 40 CS advantage, actually 50 CS almost advantage built up. You can see the gold difference right there. It is pretty substantial, but in the bottom lane, rolls reverse pretty hugely as well, and it is Jim Bones that is actually dominating there. The top lane, we've just seen it. Samux getting that kill with the help from Morden. Seems to be working out, but the jungler-wise, Sven Skeren, he's been dominating. So I also want to talk about that in terms of the CS differences, because even though mid lane is a little behind, Sven Skeren's about to find Morden, but I don't imagine they'll go all in on one another. But with Bjergsen joining the party, they may have enough damage. They want to go for this one. You can see Bjergsen coming around the side there. Here's Exterm and Cataclysm catches them both out, and Morden uses that audacious charge on the minion to get away, but the balls are fired in Extermin's face. He gets destroyed. Absolutely decimated by that unleash the power from Syndra. And you've got to feel so terrible for Exta. He got caught by the Cataclysm. It wasn't even designed for him. It wasn't targeted at him. And he manages to allow Morton to just jump away to safety. Well played there. And in terms of the gold, even though uh, Exta is further behind, his passive actually closes that gold gap a little more. It increases the gold difference between Jim Bones and the Tess because that extra farm adds up to two extra gold per CS as well. And now Samux, he's going to return to this top lane. He has got the tower. He can try and get on towards Godbro. Instead, he's just going to clear out. Doesn't want to go toe-for-toe -to -toe with him right now. He's got that build to order cut in there. So Blade of the Rune King will be coming out from Samux at some point. Or will it, though? It could be the Hexstring Grim, in fact, now I've come to think of it, because it is Jax. Nick Godbro, though, he is sticking around in that top lane, in that bush. He hasn't backed off just yet, but I don't think he's going to go for it. So he's doing very well in this top lane. It doesn't look like he's picking fights. You can see as soon as Samix jumps on top of him, the burst damage is higher than he can return. But he's he's using his abilities to farm very, very effectively under the turret. What we do see, though, is Morden sniffing around the back. He may decide to go aggressive, and Godbro, he noticed uh, um, Morden moving through the river thanks to that ward, and does decide to wisely back away. Well, we see the dragon being started out here by the Copenhagen Wolves, and while this is happening, Jim Bones is still getting all of that free farm down that bottom lane. He's got the Infinity Edge completed along with the uh, Vampiric Scepter on there. Just needs to get some attack speed going, and he is going to be a very, very dangerous AD carry if he can be protected at the back line. 
That's the question, and I think they actually have a lot of protection for them. You've got Zinzar that can scatter everybody. You've got Jax that can stun them up. You've obviously got the box, the flay, and the death sentence from Thresh as well, which are very, very impactful. What we do have on the other side, though, is the possibility to just delete him from the game. Syndra and Kha'Zix will eventually have the ability to simply single-handedly outburst him down as they are the assassins in this matchup. Well, we see Jim Bones continuing to keep them shots on towards it there. And that turret is not long in this world, I don't think. Jim Bones definitely getting the poke on. Sven Skarin, though, he's up at the golems and trying to sneak his way around. They say, yeah, we need kind of need a ward in this tribush. Instead, he's going to put the clap trap in there. If, easy for me to say. <laughs> as I stumble over my words, they're going in for Jim Bones. And a chain of corruption just missing out there, but they do manage to get the slow cataclysm comes through. You're not going to be able to escape this one, Jim Bones. He gets taken down. They're going to turn it on towards Morden now. Uh, sorry, but better. But instead, he backs off. So that's the fourth kill of the game for Sven Skarin. You feel that if they could have allowed that to go to the test, they would have preferred that, but under the situation and the fact that they, they thought he could have escaped, they decided just to get that last auto attack on Sven. It does mean that they put pressure on this bottom tower, and they're going to pick up their second tower of the game and take a slightly more gold lead. Meanwhile, Godbro, he's returned back to the top lane, continuing to push, and Samux is going back in there, this time with the Blade of the Rune King complete, getting ready to maybe jump for this one. Let's see whether he goes in straight for Godbro. Of course, he does manage to get some basic attacks, and he does go straight aggressive on towards him, puts that ward down, Twisted Fate, Exterm is going to be joining this fight. He does punish towards him, but he can't quite gain the distance, and he's too far away. Extermin showed his hand way too early. That's the best way to describe it. He was not in range. He simply could not pick the card and throw it at his enemy quickly enough because he needed to run so much further. He does have Twin Shadows available, so if he was, you know, a, a little bit quicker on the draw, so to speak, he may have been able to make that gank work. But what we did see is Godbro sticking around. He thought he could trade. He actually wanted to sort of go head to head with Samux. Took the damage and went, nope, actually, I don't want any of that. And decided to run away. Now that he's got that BF, so it's going to help. But Jim's has been stunned. Oh my lord, look at the damage straight away. Bjergsen just removed him before I got a chance to see what happened. The damage, that was before his ultimate hit as well. He just popped him. There's no other words for that, and that's the problem. You've got this super, super fair Jim Bones, well played, that's great. But all that's going to happen is Bjergsen's going to find you, he's going to unleash his power on you, and you're going to be deleted from the game. Unleash the fury, Bjergsen. It is building inside you, and it's Samux, though, that's caught out. Sven Skeren has found him. Godbro's going to be going in towards him. He does manage to get that counter strike on towards him. He's putting a hell of a lot of beating down on Godbro. He's took him down. Can he turn it into a 2v1? It doesn't matter, because Audacious Charge comes out. It's a double kill for Samux, effectively in a 2v1. This is going to be a great performance for them if Samux can continue this pressure, because Bjergsen's not going to have the ability ability to blow Jax up quite as easily as he will with a Twisted Fate and a Caitlyn. And everybody knows the power of a late game Jax. He has the ability to ace entire teams and he's going to be able to dodge a lot of damage. Bjergsen is a little bit brave here because Jax is fairly close by, but it does look like he wants to contest for this blue buff. Well, the ward is there and Morden does take it down now and he's going to have to try and slow him down. Samux thought about getting close, but he realized this is Bjergsen we're playing with. He could well be have something up his sleeve, but Samux is really putting a beating down on this turret. The turret's going to go down. Godbro comes in, jumps towards him. Counter-Strike goes out. Godbro wants to finish this one through. Can he follow on? He's already used that leap, so he won't have the reset. Samux just jumps towards Morton. I think he's going to escape this one. They're not finished, though. Godbro continues chasing. He gets the slowdown from the missiles. There's play to the Ruined King, and that's going to give Samux all the movement speed he needs to run away. So well played by them. I do want to quickly remind everybody who maybe isn't quite as familiar with Syndra. When she summons the Dark Sphere, those balls on the map, they're currently hitting for 450 damage per Dark Sphere on a mere four second cooldown. So just as an FYI. Yeah, in, in other words, yeah, he's gonna ruin your day. It's, gonna, it's not gonna be good news for you if you get caught out by that, as Jim Bones did. So all the damage in the world is not gonna help you when you get hit by one of those big balls. No, not at all. Do you see Babetta trying to throw out that death sentence and try catch the enemies away? Another blue buff spawn. Sven Skeren's been caught, and Exter's picking a battle here. Exter's going for this one. Sven Skeren, not too sure if he can go for it. Instead, he does. Cataclysm on the face. Can he prevent him? No! He tries to slide through, and now they may turn this one around. Twin Shadow goes out, gets the stun card. Wildcard goes through. He's in all sorts of trouble, but Godbro comes leaping through the bushes and cuts straight back on towards him. Beautiful play. Samix was off to the side, and he didn't manage to get involved there at all, but we do see the stealing <laughs> away the blue buff. What a cheeky play in Copenhagen Wolves. They still maintain their control over Exterminari's blue.
They can't just keep hold of that blue because, frankly, he can pick it up and walk off with it. And it's not going to happen. Bjergsen will take it regardless of whatever you're going to do. Samix needs to be very careful of Copenhagen Wolves coming from that side river. And he's going to back off and get himself that chunk of farm. But if he goes to the top, they're going to lose the middle turret. He has to react. Copenhagen, they still stacked up. This is going to be a four versus four as X that is still not alive. Svenskjern has respawned. He's hanging around in the, the uh, base for the time being. He'll be leaving there very, very shortly. It's still a very dramatic game as the Copenhagen Walls do decide to back away. It's very close. It's very, very close. It's just a thousand gold between them. Three, two turrets. Giants with the advantage in turrets, but kills all towards Copenhagen Wolves. That dragon will be up in 20 seconds, and there is the top turret going down. That's going to stretch it to a 2,000 gold lead. Samux will clear out a giant wave up the top there, but Wolves seem to be in position, ready for the dragon. So if we see the Copenhagen Wolves decide to challenge, they're going to need to make sure they focus down the targets correctly. They have to get rid of Twisted Fate or Caitlyn early, and then focus as a five man onto you know jacks being played by samix the knockup oh, almost the gets caught but Vavetta he interrupted with flay brilliant flay there oh and he flashes out of the voice box very very well played from Babetta there to avoid the damage so well played by spence he didn't use cataclysm on a single target this time around because thresh is not as high a priority target as twisted fate they have vision and positional advantage here on dragon it's going to be a free drake for the wolves the Giants, they're not even going to contest. They turn it straight towards Samix. They pinged on his head. Can they catch towards him? He's just going to back away from this one, though. It'd be amazing if they can track him down. He could always leap to a minion, and he does walk away. So let's take a look at the uh, CS numbers right now, because that 20 CS difference between the Tess and Jim Bones is still relevant. However, it's not as impactful at this stage in the game. What we do see, though, a near 75 CS lead for Bjergsen in the mid lane, and that equates to close to, what's that, 2,500 gold almost. Yeah, meanwhile, that bottom lane, it was a big advantage for Jim Bones, but since he's been called to duty for his team, it's definitely starting to collapse back towards the test. He's gaining back in towards it. You can see he's going to wipe out those minions in that bottom wave and keep on collapsing in towards it. But it looks like Giants are trying to get in towards that mid lane. Bjergsen doing a grand job of keeping them away. He can just clear those waves so easily. So he's got a great wave clear with the collection of his abilities and the fact that Giants didn't have Caitlyn or Twisted Fate there means they're not really going to make a concerted effort for the tower because they need both of those two. The fact that Jax and Zinn are both melee and you do not want to get in range of Jurgsen landing, you know, point blank abilities. It's just going to shred through you. He's also got a very early Zonya's Hourglass, which is just going to buy him all the time that he needs to survive in a fight. Extra hanging around in this bottom lane. As soon as he moves forward to push it out, expect Godbro to dive because I think Godbro is well aware <laughs> of Twisted Fate's they're position. Actually, they're actually both doing a waiting game, waiting for each other to go towards this one. And Extra is like, nope, don't want any of that. I'm going to get the hell out of here. And Godbro does show himself, and it's not really the droid he was looking for. No, not, <laughs> not the droid he was looking for, indeed. If Exeter did want to guarantee his safety, he'd be able to pop those twin shadows and at least slow down Godbro. And I'll prep him, get, it, get him ready to get that gold card out. Well, we've got this little lull in the action right now. Key pickup on the side of Copenhagen Wolves is that Aegis of the Legion, and Giants are getting there very, very shortly with Morden Zinn. So, needlessly large rod just been picked up by Bjergsen. Then balls are going to be doing a lot more damage. And now Godbro's going to continue and clear out the waves. Stood on top of a ward so they know his exact position. Pings show it out. Sven Skerin, meanwhile, he was clearing out the top lane. Sven Skerin has been playing an instrumental role for the Wolves in this game. <laughs> Bjergsen pulls the blue, throws it back. And it's just, just toying with you. It's still going to be mine. That deals, that deals really good damage as well. So the Dark Sphere is now with his ability powers up to around 500 damage per Dark Sphere. And his W, that Force of Wall, which allows him to throw the minions, like there you can see, that's hitting for 500 damage itself. So you've got 1,000 damage just from his Q and his W on a 4 and a 6 second rotation, respectively. And that's the reason that Syndra is so, so powerful. But, but her skills require a lot of aim. Wolves are positioning. They've got a free tower. They got a free power. They spotted the fact that Samux was off to the side and just rushed straight up there with that creep wave. They didn't need a great deal of damage to do to that. So it had already taken a hell of a beating from the previous engagement. And well, that does give them another advantage. Slowly, slow, but surely creeping in their favor. 3,000 gold now to the Wolves. So it is in their favor, and both of these teams scale fairly well, but they do different things. And the one thing the Wolves have to be uh, very careful of, if they rely on Kha'Zix and... Um 
uh, Bjergsen's Syndra for damage. They may not be able to blow up both Jax and Zin Zhao. They're making a very cheeky play right here, denying the vision from Baron and baiting Giants into thinking that something is up. It doesn't look like the Giants have taken the bait, but they know that Jax is in the bottom lane. And the Wolves, they're actually going to start Baron. They are absolute masters at that baiting right now, and they're going to go straight in towards it. You can see the Wolves, they're on towards the Baron. Can they do anything from it? Well, Extermin used his ult. He didn't even go for it. So he simply said, look, Samux, you are not close enough. We can't engage. So we take a look at the HPs down to 3,000 Giants. They managed to get the hook onto Spin, but he's not your target you want. No, it's not going to be the target they want. The hook was in there, but they're actually very low. They're going to dive in towards Sven and The Baron has gone towards the Copenhagen Wolves, but Jim Bones, he's going to try and poke them off from range. You can see it's getting the plunks on towards Godbro. They're chasing this one through, but the voice bikes. Oh, the hook not going to land. Ace in the hole on towards Godbro. Samak should be able to close this one out. He's going to get the counter strike in a moment, but he jumps straight towards it. The flash comes out, but better gets the leash, tries to slow them down. Godbro does manage to pick up the kill on Babetta, and now Bjergsen, he uses his onions. He could just turn around and pop them. And now they're trying to get away from this one. Sven Skerin slides back in there, but Jim Bones was ready and waiting. And now it's the Copenhagen Wolves on the hot foot. Such fantastic play from Sven Skerin, pulling away members of Giants, allowing it to be that split engagement. Bjergsen still has his ultimate available and look for them to go for a kill. Twin Shadows comes out from Extermin, but it was Bjergsen that was ready and waiting for this one. Throws the ultimate straight in towards their Extermin, goes down. Bjergsen on a rampage, picks up a second one, flashes away. He he can turn back on towards Morton. It's a great slow there from Divisio with the Glitterlands. Bjergsen throws the minion back in there, catches on towards Jim Bones. He uses the barrier bait, turns it back around, gets the kill. But it's Divisio that picks up the kill in revenge. So they end up trading three for three after that. But at the end of the day, Copenhagen Wolves, they did get the Baron. So they got a good chunk of gold. They had some regen for a brief time before losing a number of their members. And that obviously doesn't play into their favor. But a great play from them. And very, very crucially, what it shows you is they know how to deal with with those diving, kiting champions. They know to avoid jacks, and they can make team fights work in their favor. And the ping's going down, just, you can see it's it, all the pings across there. It's clearly those guys having a discussion about that fight. How the hell did that backfire so badly for us? We should have taken that fight. We had the Baron, but it didn't work out. It was a three for three trade between the two teams. Giants now, well, they are behind in the gold, of course, because of that Baron going down. It does set them 5,000 gold apart, but that team fight showed if they can catch them in the right position, they are still very, very strong. Jax and Zinzo are terrifying in this team composition because Copenhagen will need to continually be kiting and running around, and both of them can get out of Cataclysm. Because of the fact that they have the Leap and the Audacious oh, Charge, oh, no. Blue Buff was stolen away by Godbro <laughs> with a very, very cheeky Void Spike. And nevertheless, another Blue Buff stolen away. I don't think Giants have got any blues outside of their very first one? No, I thought that was the first time Xterion. I was all set and ready to say Xterion's finally got a blue, but no, the Void Space from Godbro steal it away along with the Dragon, and now that is a 6,000 gold advantage building up for the Wolves. Can the Giants get back into it? Actually, talking about that, I was touching on the fact that both Jax and Zen have the ability to get out of Cataclysm. I believe the 90 caliber net can do that as well, so I feel that the Giants have were prepared for this pick and have got champions that can work with it. What we do see is Giants, they're completely out of position for this, and Copenhagen Wolves are going to pick up their fifth tower of the map completely for free. Fall on aggression from Godbro there and Samux. He's just not in the fight. This is what happened when they went for Baron. Samux was down the bottom. This time he's at the top trying to clear out the ward, trying to keep out, keep the waves away. And the Wolves, they're just positioning it very well, thinking a little bit further ahead than the Giants. What it does also mean is that the Copenhagen Wolves are showing they're not very comfortable going straight up head-to-head -head in a five-on-five -five fight. They're not going to stand there and have a prolonged siege and run the risk of being engaged upon. But if they do find somebody out of position like Samox was for a brief second, you actually see Sven Skeren thinking about it. He got the movement speed buff from Luli and he was going, do we go, do we not go? And obviously the call was not this time. Well, there's no run the risk without Pat Sharp, and he is not on the map right now, so it's not going to happen. And instead, the Wolves, sorry, very English reference there for anyone at home <laughs> that is in England. They will know all about that one. But meanwhile, Godbro was caught a little bit by Samix there. They could push forward and try and take this middle turret. So Twin Shadows and Blade of the Ruin King was used in that particular engagement. So it's on a very short cooldown, but it's not going to be available. Bjergsen's off to the side collecting his own blue buff. He missed. He, he did miss that one. <laughs> what the hell? It is that Danish ball control. He may be good at blowing people up, but, you know, penalty shot's not his thing. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> the Spaniards at home, they'll be happy with that. So as it stands, though, he is coming from the side, and Godro goes leaping through once again. Extermin is a long way from this fight. They could push straight up to the mid. He does have Destiny available. It's not at rank three yet, so he's going to need to run for a little bit. Instead, he is starting to recall. The positioning here from Morden, I don't know if Wolves are aware of this. They may have seen him slinking off to the side, and it may signal some free damage on this in hip turrets. And there you can see the ball's getting thrown straight towards Samix. A lot of damage done towards him, and that's the top lane of the Bruiser that wants to jump in, taking the damage instead. The inhibitor turret is going to get completely chunked down here, and Giants can't do a thing about it. They do manage to land the hook on towards Sven Skeren, but the inhibitor is gone completely for free and the reason that Samus can hit so hard is he hasn't built much magic resistance at all. He's got a Rendian's Omen and Ninja Tabai. He needs some MR to survive the DPS coming out of Bjergsen and not rely entirely on his ultimate for that particular side of things. So great play from Copenhagen Wolves with an inhibitor down for free again. They now have complete map control. And now they're going to push on towards that top lane turret. And of course Baron buff's not a factor in this because frankly they were all wiped out the map and it has managed to run itself off. It's going to be back in two minutes' time because it only lasts for six, and uh, sorry, for four, I should say. And look at the power of that siege there. You know, you see that scatter the weak Syndra knocks one of the balls into the enemy and got a three-man stun from one ability. Outside of some ultimates, there are very few abilities that have that power. And as long as Bjergsen continues stunning up two or three members, it's just going to be free DPS onto these towers. And you're going to see them continually doing this. Look at the positioning on the ball. Look for scatter the weak. Both of them are going to get kicked up not this time, and then they'll land stuns when they're both flying through the air. Doesn't matter, and well, Giants realized the danger that they were in. They didn't want to see those balls flying at them once again, and instead they do back away from the turret. Look at that, though. That's what you like to see from Jim Bones on Katarina. Katarina? Caitlin. Caitlin. <laughs> we knew what you meant. Yeah, it's, we it's knew the what 1,100 meant. crits. That's what I was excited about. I was seeing those big numbers. <laughs> numbers good. Damage awesome. Uh, it doesn't help if you get blown up instantly, though. So I no. think what Jim Bones is going to need to do is he himself needs to pick up some MR as well. The Runic Bulwark has been completed for Giants, which is very, very important and crucial, too. That is reducing some of that AoE damage that's coming down from Bjergsen. But I do feel like they're going to need some more concentrated uh, uh, MR. I wouldn't even be surprised to see something like a Quicksilver Sash from Jim's because it'll work from the stun against Bjergsen, it'll work for the slow against uh, Tafisio's Lulu, and I really think it'll help his survival chances in these team fights. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't want to be extermin right now. He's going to have to run, and run like the wind, because Bjergsen has your scent and he's coming straight for you. We're not going to see any flash crazy engagements. He thought he was in the bush instead, he's already backed off. Clears the wave out and Extermin just steps back a little bit. Now we see Samix, he's trying to sneak a ward in towards that Baron. It's going to be up in eight seconds time. So we do see positioning. Bjergsen's going to be running back up to the mid lane. He was never really going to catch Twisted Fight because of the, the Lich Bane and that Twin Shadows. But what we do see is Extra a little bit out of position. He does have Destiny available, but he'll need to close some of the gap towards that Baron buff. And the last time this happened, Giants were four versus five as well. But it does look like it's just a bait from the Wolves. They've picked the fight. They've gone straight in towards it. The voice boys come in. Chain of Corruption gets thrown straight out. Morden is going to be the target. Sven Skeren was just jumped straight on towards him. Now it's going to be Sven Skeren going down. Oh, sorry, Morden going going down. Now you can see a very, very large Sven Skeren sliding through, catching out towards Extermin. We do see Godbro going down in the side there, but it's another kill for the test, taking down Extermin. And now Samux, he's running for his life. They've pinged off. They want Sven Skeren to cut him off. That's exactly what they do. They don't quite get the slow on him. This time they do. He jumps back in, gets the cap, gets the stun straight on towards him. Can he take the test down? No, he's just getting kited. The exhaust comes down and Bjergsen picks up another kill. The only man standing is Jim Bones. He still has it in him to try and snipe this out. Even more impressive, Bjergsen saved his ultimate there just for Jax. He didn't use that at the beginning of the fight. He didn't use it on any other squishies. They've stunned up Jins. If he gets closer, he may be in damage. <laughs> oh, Look he at tried the to get the steal. Didn't quite work out, though. The smite comes out from Sven Skeren, and he picks up the Baron. So four members of Copenhagen Wolves now with that Baron. Big advantage being picked up by the Wolves here with a 10,000 gold lead over the Giants. And, of course, the Super Minions bashing away on the Nexus turrets. One of them's down to 50% HP. With the fact that they've got this regen now from Baron Buff and the fact that they've got such great ranged poke from Syndra, from Varus, and from Kha'Zix, it's going to play in their favor. So we'll see how this particular matchup plays into their favor as long as they don't get caught out and jumped on by Jackson by Zin. So we do see Extermin. He's going to clear out that bottom lane. And where are the Wolves going to go now with this Baron Buff? Looks like they're heading straight for the blue buff of the Giants. 
No surprise there. They're going to take that one away. They're going to pick up the dragon on route. Why not? It's not going to take them very long to do that one. Meanwhile, Godpro does go over, leap across, and pick up that blue buff. So another blue buff stolen away. I definitely do not think a single one has been secured by the Giants. The uh, Copenhagen Wolves blue buff is available. They've just taken to farming their opponent's resources because they don't need to. They're not under threat of losing their buffs. Even though they've lost three towers, they still have complete positional and map control. And look at the vision on the minimap. If you haven't seen how many wards the Copenhagen Wolves have, just look at that. They have complete and utter vision over the side of the river and the jungle of the Giants. The defense grid is definitely laid out by the Wolves. Oh, the hook lands on towards Van Skeren, but he's not really the one you're looking for again. Instead, the ball just comes throwing across the wall there. And no, you can't have it back. And instead, and no ball game signs run all over the walls of Giants, but instead, they're just going to keep on pushing through. And we'll see how this the siege works out for them, because like I said, if Jackson sends out, jump in there and get a good engagement, it can help them out. Instead, with no uh, turret being in the mid lane, opening the Wolves decide to just push in for the inhibitor gold card is prime for extra so if they decide to go in that's good once again they hook Sven they do hook Sven he's not the one they want this time you can see Sven's going going in he's almost baiting them saying hit me with everything you've got because Ooh. I am so tanky and Jimbo it's absolutely his not he saw the ultimate from Bjergsen just popping him where he stood Unleashed power currently hitting for a minimum of 900 damage. Five members of Copenhagen Wolves, they've not let up the pressure. And now they're on the Nexus Tunch Giants once again, just allowing their opponents to attack. Chain of Corruption lands, and there you can see Godbro leaping through. The Cataclysm comes out there. Sven Skerin keeping three of them locked up at the back there. And in comes the test, the clean house. Godbro takes the laser, but it's a triple kill for the test. And now you see Bjergsen throwing the ball onto the fountain, saying, thank you very much. We will take the game. The Copenhagen Wolves pick up another win here on Super Week and they are continuing to chase down the evil geniuses for that fourth place.